Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series where we bring you bite-sized ISO videos. In this series, we'll talk about the updates to the ISO 27001 framework issued in the 2022 update. We'll cover all of the Annex A controls, both the new controls as well as the existing ones to make sure that you have everything you need to implement them effectively in your organization. This video covers identity and access management controls. The first we'll talk about is 5.15, access control. This is the generalized access control that specifies that the organization should make sure that all of its necessary physical and logical access requirements are documented within policy and are established and implemented. In addition to that is control 5.16, which is identity management. It simply states the full life cycle of identity should be managed. There's a lot of guidance behind this one. I won't spend a ton of time on it because I do think you should go read the guidance in ISO 27002. However, think about things such as onboarding throughout promotions, role changes, job changes, making sure that accesses are, access entitlements are given when appropriate, but also pruned when appropriate. And then of course, at the end of uh, an identity life cycle, when someone leaves the organization or a service account or something like that is retired. Also consider for accounts not tied to individuals, such as service accounts or generic accounts or shared accounts, that they are rotated and maintained uh, at appropriate intervals. 5.17 is around authentication information. So it's a control that says allocation and management of, of authentication information should be controlled by a management process, including advising personnel of appropriate handling of authentication information. Essentially, Sometimes you have legitimate reasons to share passwords for particular shared accounts to exchange authentication information. IT teams a lot of times have to give new employees their authentication information to sign in, <clears throat> to sign in for the first time. Make sure that those processes are documented and that people are handling that authentication information appropriately. 5.18 is access rights. So this says that access rights to information and other associated assets should be provisioned, reviewed, modified, and removed in accordance with the organization's topic-specific policy and rules on access control. ISO has lumped together several old controls within this single control here. The idea is that you should be managing all pieces of access rights and you should have the documentation and processes on paper to make sure that they're being handled appropriately. So this actually is the control where review of user access rights has been rolled into. So make sure you're still doing those user access reviews, you are aware of the full breadth of access rights within the scope of the ISMS, and that you are effectively provisioning, reviewing, modifying, and removing them in accordance with the organization's requirements. 8.2 is privileged access rights. It says the allocation and use of privileged access rights should be restricted and managed. You should take additional precautions for any privileged accounts or privileged access entitlements within the organization. They should be reviewed more frequently. They should be potentially under higher scrutiny. They should also be potentially under higher authentication requirements and security controls, such as enhanced MFA or multiple ways of ensuring that that account is actually being used appropriately. 8.3 is information access restriction. It says access to information and other associated assets should be restricted in accordance with the established topic specific policy on access control. This is basically saying that you need to make sure that the accounts and access entitlements actually enforce appropriate access to information. So it's one thing to set up multiple groups in AD but if those groups within AD are then given access to things they shouldn't actually have access to based on that role, then it's ineffective. So this is a control to make sure that you're not only defining it, but you're actually implementing access restrictions around information. 8.4 is access to source code. There's a specific control around source code access because it's so important. It says read and write access to source code, development tools, and software libraries should be appropriately managed determine who within your organization legitimately needs that access and enforce that. And lastly is 8.5, secure authentication. Secure authentication technologies and procedures should be implemented based on information access restrictions and the topic specific policy on access control. What this means is that any type of authentication technologies such as login technologies, think of Okta for example, any type of third parties that are a part of your authentication process, uh, that those technologies and procedures are implemented based on the requirements of your organization. So just make sure that you're documenting what those requirements are and that you're 
ensuring any tools or processes meet those requirements. Thanks for tuning in to this ISO Byte video series. If you'd like to learn more about updates to the framework, check out a link in the description below to a white paper we've written. Also, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content like this. Look for us on LinkedIn, and also check out our website at risk360.com to learn more about how Risk360 may be able to help you achieve your security and compliance goals.